G'day Year 11 and welcome to another YouTube lesson. Today we're going to be taking at the nature of management, which is part of business management topic, and we're looking at the syllabus dot point of skills of management. Now, there's lots of different skills a manager needs, and this is different from features of effective management. So if you're asked a question on the skills of management, always go back to your syllabus and you'll talk about the things we're going to mention soon. If you're asked about features of management, go back to that last YouTube clip and back to the syllabus and make sure you're discussing things from that. Skills of management, what are they? Interpersonal skills, closely tied with communication skills. Wonderful communication we see right now. We've also got strategic thinking paired often with vision. You have problem solving and decision making, both also skills of management. And you have flexibility and adaptability to change. On top of that, two other skills of management include reconciling the conflicting, or the last one rather, reconciling the conflicting interests of stakeholders. It's very important because different stakeholders, shareholders for one, uh, employees, workers for another, they often have different wants. Workers want good pay, fair enough. Shareholders want good profits. Profit is total revenue minus total cost. If you're increasing the cost because of an increase in wages, then shareholders won't be so happy. So <clears throat> a good skill of a manager is to be able to try and reconcile, fix, address all of those different conflicting interests between the various stakeholders. All right, now, in terms of skills of management, this refers to the attributes, skills, that managers need to possess in order to make them effective leaders. A manager is one thing, that's a title. A leader is somebody who uses that power, I guess, that authority, and is able to be able to be respected and to do a good job with it. There are of course, basic skills or technical skills that all managers need for any particular given job. E.g., you watch the block, you've got Keith, that four person, uh, would need carpentry or trade skills. A teacher would need to have their educational qualifications, Bachelor of Education, Master of Education, etc. All right. Uh, these are not included here. They're assumed to be having. So we're not talking about those skills specific to the each industry we're talking about those general skills that i mentioned earlier so some skills that managers need in order to be effective managers include the ones i mentioned interpersonal communication strategic thinking the list goes on all right keep in mind that many of these skills work hand in hand i.e communication is a big part of interpersonal skills similarly vision is a major aspect involved in strategic thinking, etc, etc. All right, so interpersonal. You might have heard that before. If somebody's interpersonal, they get along well with others. Interpersonal skills refer to having good people skills. Lots of teachers hopefully have good interpersonal skills, although I've met some who do not. Now look at me when you shake your head. Now, these interpersonal skills, these people skills, include communication, but it's bigger than just communication. These skills mean you're a good listener, you're able to get along well with others. Neither of those are exactly communication skills. They're on, uh, in addition to communication. You're seen as a good leader, but you're not too aggressive or too passive. You're assertive. It's very important. It's a very important skill of management. Because if you have bad people skills, bad interpersonal skills, your workers will not like or respect you and are less likely to follow your instructions. Now, the second skill of management is communication. Communication is about sending a message to another person. A message might be verbal, meaning words as we're doing now, either written, in your workbooks and so on, or spoken, and used to convey the message. Alternatively, 
You may choose to convey a message using non-verbal methods, as simple as a smile. So if you notice your teachers like smiling and nodding, that's a bit weird, but then, you know, they're like what you're saying. Your teacher's like giving you death stares. Then they're non-verbal communications. So non-verbal communication is part of communication too, as is verbal. Non-verbal communication is any message that is not written or spoken. It is very important skill of management. If you are to be an effective communicator, then workers, if you're not, then workers won't know what to do or may misinterpret what you are after. I imagine your teacher was a bad communicator. I'm sure some of you are sitting there going, oh yeah, I know that one's good, that one's bad, and so on. It's a very important skill of management. Next one is strategic thinking. So the next skill of management we have is strategic thinking. It involves thinking about a business's future direction and what future goals the business wants to achieve. Like before with communication and interpersonal skills that were closely intertwined, similarly with strategic thinking and vision, we see the same sort of thing. All right, it's very important strategic thinking because the business environment changes very quickly. And if a manager doesn't think about the future, RE, in relation to technology, then they're unlikely to survive. Now, the key difference, because I mentioned they're similar, strategic thinking and vision, but a key difference between vision and strategic thinking is a vision is about looking into the future, not with a crystal you know, ball, but trying to anticipate what may well happen or predict what things are likely to be around in 10, 20, 30 years. I, 30 years ago, thinking about the internet and how it will work with business is vision. Whereas strategic thinking takes this a step further. So if you're a manager, you want to use the skill of vision to predict what is likely to happen, but then you want to think or plan strategically for how your business will adapt or change or make best use of this future prediction. All right, the next skill is vision. As discussed previously, vision is the ability for the business to look ahead and attempt to predict or plan what new technologies might exist. It's not just about technology, it's about anything to do with the future. I, the vision for a business 30 years ago was that globalization would increase and business would face increased competition from overseas, but also additional opportunities, additional overseas customers would also develop. Technology was part of that, but it's not solely the case. All right, the fifth, if my maths is correct, which it's probably not, fifth skill of management is problem solving. Problem solving, again, closely linked with decision making. Problem solving means finding and then implementing a course of action to, to correct an unworkable situation. Although managers have to deal with many problems in the course of a day, not all problems require such a systematic formal process. Now, the key difference between decision making and problem solving is that decision making is part of the problem solving process. Problem solving is bigger than decision making and the problem solving is also about identifying various problems, then acting, putting in place a new course of action. When the manager decides this new course of action or plan for the business, they are making decisions, decision making. So you have a problem you need to solve, it's quite large, and you make decision after decision after decision, that's the decision making process, to eventually, hopefully, arrive at a workable solution to that problem. It's a very important skill for a business and a manager because many problems arise for a business and they need to be solved if a business is therefore to be successful. Now, decision making. We're getting there, kids. The task of solving problems will obviously require ongoing making of decisions. Decision making is the process of identifying the options available and then choosing a specific course of action to solve a specific problem. As discussed above, it's part of the problem solving process where a new course of action is decided by the manager. 
It's a vital skill of management because decisions need to be continually made for a business. Now, the next one, the think, seventh and eighth skill of management, you have flexibility and adaptability to change. For the most part, most textbooks kind of had them under the same heading and merge them together. There's a slight difference, but if you don't get it, it's okay. They're, they're very, very similar. Just like problem solving and decision making work together, so too does flexibility and adaptability to change. Flexibility is the ability of a manager to put in place procedures to make sure that the business is flexible, able to change if needs be, has that ability to change. Whereas adaptability of change refers to does the business have the flexibility to change if something unexpected pops up. So I said in the textbooks, they're often used interchangeably. All right, last one, reconciling the conflicting interests of stakeholders. And we as managers need to be able to constantly walk a type road, type, tight, get it eventually, tight road between meeting the various interests of all stakeholders. Remember, shareholders are an example of a stakeholder, just like employees are or anything else. They're not one and the same thing. I talked earlier about how profits are what shareholders want mostly, whereas society is another stakeholder. They care about environmental aspects, which might reduce profits for shareholders. So managers need to have that ability to reconcile, to solve this conflicting interest between society as a stakeholder, environmental groups, shareholders, workers who may want more pay, and so on. All right, guys, thanks again for listening to another lesson, and I'll see you in future. Goodbye.